Would you recommend buying an Avid S4 or Avid S6 console? And to answer this question correctly, it all depends on the person. For me and the work that I do, it's massively beneficial. For a producer, for you know, someone that's making beats or whatever and just doing general, general tasks in their door, it's massively overkill. But look, if you're if you're making mad amounts of money and you've got 40, 50, 60, 100 grand that you want to just spend, by all means, go and get one. They're expensive, ridiculously expensive. Um, overpriced, yes. But if you're working in a door and you want full control over everything that you're able to do with a mouse and keyboard on a console, you know, they're, they're, they're incredible for that. Like, let, let me just quickly brush over what the Avid S4 is. And what the Avid S4 is, is let's say you're working in Pro Tools like I do. Everything you can do in Pro Tools is at your fingertips. You can, it's more than just faders and pots. You've got full mapping and plugging control. You've got control of sends, pans, everything. Um, you can tr control uh, folders on this side, channels on that side. It's it's incredible what it can do. And the the main reason it's so important to me is it's a time saver. And, and from a business perspective, when it comes to a console like this, the amount of time that it saves me, like I can work, let's say, five times quicker. I can mix a track five times quicker than if I had a mouse and a keyboard, for instance. So the amount of time that it actually saves me, it pays for itself. I mean, this thing paid for itself within a few months because of the amount of time it saved me. But if you, let's say, look, they're, they're, they're expensive. Like this one now, I think it's about 42,000, which is mad. That is mad amounts of money to be spending on what is essentially a door controller. And does it do much more than the Avid S1? Um, in terms of fader control, exactly the same thing. Um, you've got the pots so you can control the pan, exactly the same. The one good thing about it is you've got things like the plug-in mapping um, and Avid will never Avid will never bring out a, a a kind of extension to the S1 that is just like pots for plug-in mapping they'll never bring that out because they know as soon as they bring that out one of these becomes obsolete you know talking of expensive things for it I mean a screen um, I don't use the Avid screens because they're stupidly expensive seven thousand pound for the Avid screens, and you need three of them on this console. It's like, come on, man, 21 grand for three screens. It's, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, of course, I didn't opt for the 7,000 pound screens. I put my own screens on, which were 130, 140 quid, and you can put whatever you want on there. It's, it's just, just, I don't know where the, um, the, the well, I do know where it comes from. It comes from a cash grab. The the S4, however, is incredibly good, and I highly recommend it if you're if you're working in Pro Tools or any door in in that case. But Pro Tools is what it's designed for, obviously. If you're working in Pro Tools and you want full control over everything that you do in Pro Tools, it's perfect for that. It's it's a time saver. Um, it makes you it makes you work better because you're more hands on. It's like working with analog equipment, but you're obviously controlling plugins, but you feel like you're on analog. So it, it gets you more in tune with what you're doing. You can feel you can feel the kind of you can't feel the uh, you kind of can. I mean, you can feel what you're doing with the plugin, for instance, when you turn the pots, which is a lot better than if you're using a mouse, um, turning multiple uh, parameters at a time, and 
you jump around, like an EQ for instance, you use it like you're jumping around an analog EQ. Um, so the only people, the only people I would recommend that buy this, and realistically, you know, there, there's there's two kind of price points here where you've got, well, there's three. You've got the Avid S1 setup, which is a thousand pound per per eight channels, and then you can get the dock, which is essentially like that's an S1 essentially there. That's the dock, and then that's an S1 over there. So you if that's going to cost you three grand whereas that's going to cost you 42 and you're not getting a massive amount extra really um a touch screen which you can then put you know on the s1 and the dock you can put the ipads whatever you've got a touch screen there it's you know the the s1 and the dock are for the kind of the general you know general normal person who's who doesn't want to spend a ridiculous amount of money on on a big console like this that that there like three grand it's it's a lot of money but it's it's not going to break the bank it's not like you know the, the deposit on a house sort of money um then you've got this this sort of range where you've got between 20 to to 50,000 where you've kind of got this is your companies your companies are the only people I'd recommend buying an Avid S4. They look great, they they work great, and you 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 are going to save a lot of time. So from a company's perspective, you can you can work faster, you can work more efficient, you can make more money for your time. So from a company perspective it's very very good. Then you've got up the the mad ends where you're talking like hundred thousand to two hundred thousand for the massive s6 console now that for me it's it's for for me and what i do that's overkill for me but if i was like you know working with a team mixing films whatever that's that's going to be a great console to work on if you were a producer working on that i mean of course if you were a millionaire producer by all means, have this massive S6 console. It will look the nuts and you'll be able to control everything. It's massively overkill, but great fun to, to have if you've, you know, if you've got mad amounts of money. If, if you were a producer and you were doing really well, I'd recommend getting, a, getting an S4. But if you're a producer that's, you know, 40 grand is a hell of a lot of money. And believe me, even to me, 40 grand's a hell of a lot of money. You know, you're talking deposits on house prices. You know, if you some in some areas of the UK, you could probably buy a house for the same price as that console. Which, um, you know, that's that's saying something. Um, so I would, I would, I wouldn't recommend the S4 to people who, if you were to spend forty grand on a console you that that would be considered a lot a lot of money if you're if you're an artist go with the s1s go with the docks you know the thing with this right as well is let's face it when it comes to this sort of technology something newer and better is is only over the horizon you know in 10 years time this is this is a brick and it's worth nothing because there's new tech that comes out there'll be an avid s7 avid s8 that will replace it and yeah and your your, your money just goes down the drain but for, for me from a business perspective if i've spent 40 grand on something it it becomes a brick and it ends up going in a skip i mean it won't do that it, it will it would get sold um because someone will still be able to want to use it um if it, if it got to the point where it was it was worthless to me anymore you know i've got a lot of mileage out of it i've got a lot of use out of it and um it's 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 paid for itself so it's it's not too big a deal whereas someone who's a producer and it's like yeah i want to i want to buy a console that i want to live with for a very very long time 20 years or something this may not be even be compatible in 20 years time like you've only got to look at like a c24 it's a pain to connect to c24 and you have to use the old versions of pro tools i don't think you can now use the newer versions of pro tools with a c24 or a digi design what was it a, uh commands yeah i can't think what they were called uh no can't remember but the, the, all these old 
consoles, um, you know, you, you, they become dated and they, they, they become incompatible with the newer versions of Pro Tools. And that will happen because Avid are like um, the majority of big tech companies where they want to push you towards, they don't want to sell you something and then you use it for the next 20, 30 years. They want to sell you something and then they want you to get rid of that and buy the next thing that comes out. And that's just the way it is. And when you work with those sorts of companies, that's that's how it plays out. And, you know, you'd be naive to think that that's not how it works, because that is how it works. And that's why I would say if you were a producer and you was you was kind of like if you if you looked at 40 grand uh, for a console that is essentially a door control, it doesn't change the sound at all. If you looked at 40 grand and thought, yeah, that's 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 way too much money to be, uh, you know, forking out. You know, you've got a thousand pound door like Avid S1 that's that's perfectly fine, and it will do everything that you want it to do. The only thing it won't do is this this kind of vast range of of plugin mapping. That's really the one thing that it doesn't do. Um, one thing I will say is that I'm I'm pleased I've got an S4. I'm pleased that I got it, and I'm mainly pleased because I bought it um, new and I bought it relatively cheap compared to what they cost now now they they, they they just went up and up and up in price um which is you know i could probably sell mine now for a similar price to what i paid for it new because it's gone up so much in price due to i don't know material costs whatever Every, everything's gone up in price we all know that but um if you were a producer, for instance, I wouldn't recommend an S4. I'd recommend the S1. If you're a company, I recommend the S4. The S4 is brilliant. Um, if you're if you're working on major projects, big projects with multiple people, and you want to span them across a big desk, the Avid S6. I mean, you. I was going to say you can't go wrong with with with, with going and buying these kind of more large format consoles, but you can go wrong because if if you buy one and you don't get the use out of it and it doesn't pay its money back, it doesn't pay pay back, um, you know, it's money down the drain. And one thing I will leave this video on is I had I had a choice of spending, let's say, £3,000 on an S, two S1s and a dock. Or I had the choice of spending, let's say, 42 on an S4. I am pleased that I went with the S4, not just because of the additional functionality that the S4 has, but also the way it looks on this desk um, and the way I've got it set up. Um, so I'm pleased with how it looks, how it how it is, and I do feel it's you know it's it's one of those things where I sit and do these videos, for instance, and the backdrop of the the console behind me, it's it's a lot more impressive than an S1, two S1s and a dock. Um, but if you know if that's if that doesn't matter to you, all that sort of stuff, and it shouldn't really matter. But it does when it, you know, when you're when you're doing these sorts of videos and when you're doing pictures and things like that. The look of it does; it looks a lot more impressive. The same with the S6 looks massively impressive. Whereas um, the S1s, if I had two S1s and a dock in the middle there, it's a little bit like meh kind of thing. It's it's not as impressive. Um, so yeah, would I recommend it? Um, yes, I would recommend it for a big company or a bigger company. Um, a company, yes. Um, but I'd say if it's for an individual, I wouldn't recommend getting one. I'd recommend, though, the S1s and the Dock. I would recommend those.